It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Chris Dorn, who is the head beach volleyball coach at Vanguard University. Coach, first off, thank you very much for taking some time with us today. Let's get started with the fact that your team coming off a national championship is at the top of the preseason ranking in NAI beach volleyball. Number one team in the country coming into the season, which is right around the corner. Yeah, it's coming up quickly. <laughs> we uh, we play next week and uh, next Friday, so it's it's uh, it's here basically. Um, yeah, it's and and I think like you and I talked when we were off the air. Um, you don't want to put too much weight on rankings, right? Even even the ones that come out during season, it's a great milestone. It's something to reflect on, uh, but you probably won't even see us from our like Instagram accounts. You probably won't even see us promote that very much uh, because anything that kind of gets in the way of our of our long term vision we think is a detriment, right? So it's, we'll address it, we'll talk about it, hey, this is great, uh, but then we kind of want to move on and make sure that we're working and earning for something else, right? Um, but yeah, it's it's a unique position to be in. Well, well you know, as, as much as anything, it probably just makes the target a little bit bigger, so that's, <laughs> but the games aren't played on paper, they are played out there on the field, the court, the pitch, you name it, wherever it is, that's where those games are played. And coach, uh, you, you got it all done last year though, the beach volleyball and, and invitational sport in the NAIA, but you come away with a national championship. And along the way, you know, you, you play teams that were, if you will, ranked a little bit higher. And I guess to be the best, you have to beat the best. Victories yeah. on that path of, against the number one team in Westcliff and number two in Corbin along the way. Talk about the national championship. <laughs> ah, that's a fun, that's a fun weekend. Um, yeah, so many things went well and also hilariously wrong. Uh, but it, it was really was a kind of a demonstration of the character of our team um, and just how they were fighting and pushing through things. So uh, you may know this already, but, you know, going into that, we'd gotten our, our, uh, I was going to use something we probably can't record, but uh, we got our butts handed to us uh, at by Westcliff uh, in the pouring rain at our place uh, a little bit previous to that. Um, and so we knew what we were, what to expect kind of when, when watching the film and expecting that stuff. Um, and obviously we were, we were against Corbin in the finals the year before. And then during that tournament itself, uh, you probably know this as well, but um, that first day is pool play. And we had uh, basically the same exact pools as we had from the year before. And Corbin beat the tar out of us, I think, 05. Uh, and then we, we came out with like a three-way tie, so we all had to play again. And Corbin beat the tar out of us 0-5. to five. Uh, And so kind of going into that, it was kind of a, again, that can break teams in itself. You know, but to watch these young ladies, like, I mean, obviously we did a little bit as coaches, but you, you know, this sport, like we really don't have a lot of control. And this is really about building into their IQ and their belief system and how they can solve problems together. So watching them kind of as partnerships and as the full team kind of diving back in and saying, you know, what, this isn't over. Uh, and then just coming out and, you know, for us, one of our main rivals in our conference is Ottawa. And to have to play them for the fifth time that season was a championship match for us. And then to have to play Westcliff, you know, before the championship was a championship match for us, you know, and then seeing Corbin again in the finals was a championship match for us. So just watching the ladies just step up and step into those, into those roles that tend to be the high pressure situations. And again, I would say keep phenomenal poise, uh, cheer for each other genuinely. And again, like even the, the couple people that we had, like at our sixes pair that couldn't, couldn't compete or play, were continuously like walking through and encouraging and cheering and even giving scores to people like myself who kind of were sitting on more than like one court because you know we had all five courts going for the championship so uh everybody played a, such a huge role and then to just be part of that just culmination of like well this court's catching up and then this court we just won in this court and then all of a sudden that final swing um and just seeing that kind of that line bounce and all of a sudden it's like this is it you know uh just a great culmination of, of seeing the ladies' perseverance throughout the entire season. Um, and that includes, you know, like we get to play at the beach, which is amazing. Uh, it's also extremely cold in the morning. Uh, and, you know, last year we played more through rain and through hail and all kinds of stuff than we'd ever played before. So it was kind of a good little like, yeah, we've we worked for this. We earned it. And um, obviously 100 things have to go right also. But uh, we were able to experience that. So it was amazing. I'm thoroughly enjoying the retelling of, of the 
events and and it seems like you, you could just call it back i'm sure you relive some of those moments every now and again anyway they'll never go away coach congratulations for that uh, we enjoy talking about volleyball here on this channel and uh, appreciate the sport I, I know that you have indoor variety at vanguard as well and and more schools are getting beach volleyball now and it's becoming more of a, a part of a something that's not just on one coast or the other that uh, you know you can you can have these programs as as a part of your athletic department I would ask you then, with that in mind, and, and uh, you know, you have ties to the, the the indoor volleyball team as well. Very very close ties, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, is there any crossover in the roster? I mean, do you, do you get some of the same players because they do play at different times of year? Great question. Uh, and as you alluded to, um, I, I think their indoor women's coach is an amazing person and absolutely <laughs> beautiful. Uh, happens to be my wife, but. Um, yeah, we both uh, we both have very similar philosophies. So if we did share, and we have in the past, um, I think that's a, it's a fairly easy transition. Even though, obviously, as we know, the indoor game, the beach game, it's still volleyball, but it's it's significantly different in, in every skill and every touch and every movement, uh, even in your, in your mindset. Right, it's significantly different between the two. Uh, us being a smaller program and me being a part time coach and then part time working for Fellowship Christian Athletes, uh, we. We have typically held a small roster, and so with that, that's that has meant almost every year that we've pulled in someone from, you know, maybe a senior that's been that's graduating. So she's already played her last season for my wife's team and the indoor team, uh, and so now we pull her on the beach, you know, for a couple of tournaments or a couple of matches or like for the entire season. So I believe every year we've been in existence, which is number seven now, we um, have pulled in one of her student athletes at some point. But we also try not to do the full crossover athlete. Uh, when we started doing research early, um, though the original, let me put it this way, the original goal for Vanguard was to get a separate sport and bring in more athletes. Because again, we a great reflection of the university. They give back after they graduate. Um, high GPA students, high quality people represent the university well. So there's all things, all kinds of things that go into that. And then once we built that goal, then it was like, well, we really love our culture. And so if our culture is number one and getting those small touches in the sand and being coming a sister, that takes time. And so in doing some of those, you know, even a lot of our bonding activities are done in the first semester of our character growth, our vulnerability, that kind of stuff. So uh, it does behoove us to have more of a set beach roster for the entire year, which usually means that we're not crossing over or we're not asking that to, to happen per se. So it has happened in the past um, and they've been key players at, at key moments for us. Um, but it is not something that we try and do uh, every year. If that makes sense. I would imagine that would be a 12 month adventure for those athletes as well. Probably feel like about a 15 month adventure, you know, every year. Uh, yeah, and that is, that is part of it is, you know, there is burnout. Right. And so we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we know how much we practice. And, and again, you know, this is every step on the sand is a workout in itself. So we need to be, be balanced in that. And if we want to con continue to come and be in like, enjoy practice, enjoy learning, striving for those goals, enjoying each other, then we also need to monitor our time in doing that, making sure we're still sleeping and resting and getting nutrients and so on and so forth. And, um, you know, we see a lot of that with those crossover sports of, yeah, by the time they get through beach or the next indoor season, they're burnt out. So we want to make sure that they're, uh, they're at their best. So. We're visiting with Chris Dorn now from Vanguard University here on the summit. And I encourage you, please take the time to like this video and, and enjoy the videos here on the channel. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And visiting today now, at, uh, speaking about Vanguard University, which is a uh, Christ-centered university in California. I, let me, I, I like to read this, this from the, the about section. That's, you learn so much uh, about these universities and colleges, Coach, in, in reading the about section. I always enjoy going, finding out a little bit more and uh, learning about you all, too, and doing my research to get to know more about you individually. But I, I like this line. Vanguard is constantly seeking to expand its influence and service through education that provides excellence without compromise, great line, for the glory of Jesus Christ. Talk about working at a university like that. Uh, it's a pleasure. And this is, uh, it's one of the easiest recruiting gigs I've had as far as uh, kind of, you know, having the passion and the backup behind the pitch per se, you know, and that, uh, you know, we, I've gotten to be at, at multiple different schools. We've gotten to kind of help solidify and, and, and practice and fail at what our culture should be and how we can do that. Those are all great things. But I will say we've also been in the negative. We've been at some places where, okay, we might have a healthy culture 
but that may not last because maybe they're not supported in residence life. Maybe they're not supported um, in you know the, the cafeteria or their professorship class. You know, whatever relationships they have on campus are not that kind of same dynamic. And so we either have to fight extremely hard to keep our culture and make that healthy, or it fizzles out over time because they're not getting that same type of support and input uh, from other places. And Vanguard is the exact opposite. Like it's I actually tease and kind of some talking to some recruits recently of like, this is the only place I've been where professors will actively reach out to you and want to go on a coffee date to get to know you better, you know? And so it's kind of fun because by the time we, not only do they have that same kind of uh, rhythm, that same kind of, um, you know, genuine, authentic environment of people wanting to care about each other. Uh, but again, these are people who also have phenomenal networking and phenomenal, you know, now when you're getting a recommendation letter, when you graduate, it's not just, oh, here's your generics. You know, it's no, here are the specific fields you can go into. I'm writing this letter specifically based on Joey's positive talents and what you can do. And I'm helping you in the right direction. And so that kind of culture is awesome. Um, you know, and our, our campus pastor and guys like that are just phenomenal in the way they set up like the chapel systems and um, just the support structure there. And again, coming from the FCA side too, like getting to work with those guys and still being able to do FCA on campus and building those relationships amongst the other coaches is, is awesome. I think we're, we're gifted with the phenomenal staff here. So, Yeah, you mentioned that earlier, and I'd, I'd, I'd like to follow up on that a little bit. You, you're working with the FCA. Where where are you working in particular? And I mean, are you working on the college level or, or with some of the local high schools around where you happen to be? Yeah, my heart's always been for college. That's when uh, both my wife and I, we, we grew into being the – Oh, well, let's put it this way. I failed every day, but I ended up growing into the person that I, or the man I wanted to be in college. And my wife would say the same about her, her uh, trip on womanhood. And um, that's why we just have such a passion for this age level. So I started out uh, coming on staff with FCA, with FCA volleyball specifically. And that was more kind of the Huntington Beach, uh, some of the professional side, and then some of the college athletes as well. And then now for the last, I think, two years, I've been fully invested back in Vanguard. So now it's FCA uh, for all sports at Vanguard. And so uh, I have a fellow FCA -er who works with me on campus and he's a former baseball or graduate baseball player from here. And so we kind of tag team uh, the coaches and, and events that we run and we have kind of a multi-sport huddle where everybody's invited. So um, yeah, it's a ton of fun. And it's, it's, again, it's, I'll say personally, the most encouraged or the closest I've been to the Lord have also have been the moments where I have like, people that report to me as far as like maybe a mentorship or discipleship relationship and people that I also report to and have strong relationships and discipleship there too. And uh, this is a place where that can happen well. So yeah. well, I, I really appreciate hearing about that. And, and uh, it sounds like it's going well then, and that you're what, from what you've learned, you, you're able to pass on and, and you're right. We, we, uh, we find these niches and we, these, uh, or how are you going to pronounce that, uh, age groups that, that we work well with, that we serve well with. And, and it's really cool to hear that coach. Well, uh, back to volleyball really quickly then, because the season is a week away, yeah. uh, very literally a week away. And I know it, it, and it doesn't get easy to start. That's one of the interesting things I, I in looking at your schedule, I mean, uh, lots of times people might get a, a, a teams might get you know, some non-conference games in, I mean, boom, right off the bat, five, six non-conference matches. You all come in on riding a winning streak in the GSAC of, of the 34 consecutive wins in conference play. Well, you get the season started just like that against the Masters on the road. Talk about your season a little bit and, and how interesting it is to start in conference play like that. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's definitely the because you know the majority of my coaching career was was indoor women's then indoor men's and uh, it's certainly opposite of those like you mentioned like you know usually you, you get some you know if you're if you're a good established team you've got a lot of returners and maybe you have some tune-up matches right so you kind of learn how to win early or if you're a team that's inexperienced maybe you you schedule some really tough matches first but they're not conference yet right now you have some build up there um, so that is kind of fun to like jump right into the fire. And, and part of our philosophy is like, Hey, every match is a championship match. Like our mindset shouldn't change. And I saw that from Bobby Knight years ago, having him commentate one of the, the basketball final fours. Uh, but that does actually help that mindset of like, no, everything counts. Right. And so even when we play some of the, uh, the big dog division one teams that we, that we get and are fortunate to play out here because where we are uh, and, and they're willing to take us, uh, you know, those are such great learning experiences. So, you know, we we start with, you know, our, our full jets are going, you know, right in conference, you know, and I think you uh, you saw the schedule. So, you know, I think the weekend after that, we're in Arizona. 
And so, again, it's it's at least another two conference matches there. So uh, it's it's good for us to kind of like like know it's here. This isn't a buildup. You know, it's like we want to continue to get better as we go along. Uh, but, you know, as far as like the championship is here, right, and, and it starts on next Friday. So, Well, Coach, then uh, we, I, I'm sure you want every moment to have time to practice. I believe you just came out of practice, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope it was a good one today and the weather was good and everything worked out. No hail today. That, um, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> glad to hear that. But but success to you all. Vanguard Lions, the number one team in the country coming in. Forget the rankings, though. They're, they're about to get out and, and uh, play some volleyball and and get things done. We'll follow you, Coach. We definitely will. We, we look forward to seeing how this plays along and, and gets into the playoffs, but we'll keep up with you. Coach Chris Dorn from Vanguard University, thank you so much for taking no, thank time. Thank you, Joey. On the I summit. appreciate it.